You know, the craziest thing is everybody's asking me about a lot of different questions well, about Teslas in general. And one of my favorite things to do is go to Tesla superchargers and talk to a lot of the new owners, see what their concerns are and help them out. You know, uh, if they have any questions, I want to help them out. I want to figure out what they, uh, well, how I can help. It's part of being, you know, the Tesla community. It is in some ways, I feel like it's an obligation for us to kind of help out everybody. And uh, that being said, there's a lot of questions, concerns people have, and I always wonder where a lot of this stuff comes from uh, because the concerns are kind of weird. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So let's kind of get into that. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. This is Summon Tesla. If it's not your first time here, you're absolutely awesome for coming back. I truly appreciate your support. Considering YouTube is kind of a eh, questionable, your support means a lot. So hitting that thumbs up in the beginning of the video actually does, believe it or not, does actually help. And uh, subscribing to the channel obviously helps me because I can grow the channel. I can put polls up. I can do all those things and I need to do that. Well, in order for me to be able to do that, I have to get to 1,000 subscribers. So your support would be absolutely awesome. All right, with that being said, let's talk about, well, concerns for new buyers of Teslas. That's gonna be the topic of our conversation today, so let's get right into it. So what are some of the key concerns that I keep uh, hearing? And like I said, I love going to superchargers and helping out Tesla owners. And when they first get their car, they don't have a lot of information. They don't really know what to do, what they shouldn't do, and uh, how to set up the cars and all those things. So what do I do? I go around and I kind of ask, well, how can I help you? One of my favorite lines to use, and a lot of you are followers, I know our, uh, you know, that's where I met you. And one of my favorite lines to use is, how long have you had your car? And welcome to the family. And when I keep saying welcome to the family, I mean the Tesla family, obviously, but I immediately go into, are there any questions you have, any concerns or anything that I might be able to help you with for you to understand your car better or, uh, you know, maybe a setting that you don't know about? And of course, there's always questions, tons of them, but it's the concerns that I'm more worried about. The concerns always come down to, uh, you know, my fam famous ones. I'm gonna get this rant out of my system right off the bat on this video, so excuse me, it's probably gonna take a couple of minutes, but the number one thing I keep hearing from everybody is panel gaps. Panel, <laughs> panel gaps, panel gaps, panel gaps. It is absolutely insane the amount of times I hear this. And I wanna clear something up. In fact, I'm gonna set a challenge for each and every one of you. If you don't know, I do have an Instagram account and that's also at Summon Tesla. But I'm gonna set a challenge for all of you. Go to any legacy automaker dealership, but I want you to go to high-end legacy automakers. Uh, Aston Martin, Jaguar, you choose. I'm not gonna keep going on, but Mercedes, BMWs. And I want you to really compare your panel gaps to these legacy automakers, the, the companies that have been around for ages and really truly do comparisons. Because when you do that, you realize the panel gaps are such an irrelevant, such a stupid thing to be talking about. It just doesn't make any sense. So what I tell a lot of you owners is, I understand where this is all coming from. The, you know, the whole panel gaps idea has been started almost from day one that Tesla came out, which kind of makes sense because there really wasn't much to pick on. And so somebody picked up an idea of panel gaps, let's go with that, and that has never really stopped. I hear about it till this day. Three years ago when I started this channel, uh, that was one of the first comments I had when I talked to somebody at, a, at an actual supercharger, which is ridiculous. If you are new to the channel, you probably don't know this, but I'm a car guy. I love cars, I, I've driven, most cars under the sun and I love driving. It's it's one of those things. Ever since I bought that car right there, I never bothered driving another car. Well, I still drive all the other cars. I just don't own other cars. And the key reason is because Tesla's give me everything and then some. But the panel gaps, they are something that I've seen from million dollar cars, four hundred thousand dollar cars, two hundred thousand, one hundred thousand, fifty thousand, ten thousand. 
I've seen them on all sorts of cars. Panel gaps happen, it's not a big deal. It doesn't do anything. It's just a thing and it's in your head. So get that out of your head. There's no need for it. Anyway, that being done, some of the other concerns I see, they are kind of justified. So for example, um, a really good example of, I think the most justified thing that I see is the way that the paint is. I find a Tesla, uh, the paint job on Teslas, they're beautiful paint jobs, but they are very, very susceptible to rock chips. That being said, I never really concern myself with rock chips. It's a vehicle. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I use this car for, you know, getting me from point A to point B, getting basically so I don't have to walk. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Which, what does that mean? That means that when you're buying these vehicles, you're not buying... It's not, don't compare to having a loved one, to having a kid, to buying a house. It's a freaking vehicle. It's just because you spend money on it doesn't mean anything. It's, it's just a vehicle. You, you, people get so concerned and so caught up with silly things like a rock chip. It's going to happen. If you drive your car, it's going to happen. That's just the bottom line. It doesn't make sense for you to stress out about it. I think when it comes to the rest of the things, uh, one of the key things I see a lot from the, the especially the new owners in, in the Tesla community is people are putting everything to mileage or kilometers rather than percentage as far as knowing their distance and you know how much range they have left. Obviously, range anxiety is a thing. It's not, ouch, it's not a, it is an actual thing. People do worry about range. And to a degree, I can say rightfully so. Uh, I, you know, people heard a lot about range and uh, how, you know, it can impact you and all those fun things. Realistically speaking though, I made countless videos on this telling you if you buy a car, make sure you buy a car that is suited for your life, for your needs. And in that aspect, electric vehicles might not be a thing. If you're the kind of person who's going up into the middle of nowhere, uh, up in the mountains, you know, if you live up north where we live, uh, you know, you might be going a thousand, two thousand kilometers up into the mountains that are really, there's no superchargers. We use common sense. You obviously are not gonna buy a Tesla for that. Uh, you're not gonna buy an, any electric vehicle for that. So when you, when you look at range and you have range anxiety, the reason I tell you to put your settings to percentage rather than the mileage or how much mileage, how many kilometers or how many miles you have left, look at the percentage. I hate to say this, but these cars, they are basically iPhones on steroids. <laughs> That's really what they are. What does that mean? That means when you look at your phone, you don't look at how much talk time you have. Uh, that's not that's not what the phone displays. It tells you the battery percentage. This is a big battery with a shell. <laughs> think of think of the car as a as a uh, iPhone case, and think of everything else in the car as the iPhone itself. And so this is essentially just a big battery with motors and a bunch of tech in it. So everything you're doing on these cars, you're going to be looking at percentage. And this is something I tell everybody. Uh, I often, you know, when people are questioning me on it, I usually turn, turn around and say, well, you're supposed to charge between 20 and 90%, not 80, by the way, go into your settings, you'll see that. So when you get to 20%, you know you're at 20% if your setting is set to energy rather than mileage. But if you're set to mileage, when do you know that you're at 20%? The kilometers change or the mileage changes based on your driving habits. And that brings me into the next step. When you're looking at the battery degradation of your vehicle, you have to look at being smart. The car adapts itself to your style of driving. So if two separate people are driving the vehicle on two separate profiles, because you can set up your profile, you'll see that the mileage is actually different from both people based on how they drive. Well, when you charge up your battery to 100%, it actually still tells you the distance remaining based on your style of driving. And then the, I have tested this, I have proven this, it works like a charm. You don't believe me? It's very simple. Unlike most people, I tell you guys how to test these theories. Set up a second profile. One profile, drive like a lunatic, be stupid, do whatever you want to do, I don't care. On the second profile, set it up as a granny driver. Just drive normal. 
in both profiles, charge up the vehicle to 100% and you're gonna get two different numbers. And again, this is why it is so accurate when you put in your destination and the car tells you this is how much percentage you'll have when you get to a specific point. That's why it happens because the car adapts to you. What have you done? Based on your driving history, you're only gonna have this much range. So when you charge up your car to 100% and you check your mileage and you go, holy moly, I lost, uh, I have battery degradation. No, you don't. You obviously are driving the car with, you know, more passionately, which is okay, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but you want a more simplistic explanation. You have an EPA rating uh, on your regular gas car. You drive that car like a lunatic. Obviously, you're using up more gas. Hence, when you fill up, you used up a different number and you're not getting the EPA rated uh, numbers, but you drive that car properly, you're getting more distance out of it, so forth and so on. Hence, you're getting closer to the APA rating. It is really that simple. So for all of you out there who are new, stop worrying about all the silly stuff, but rather try and understand how to do certain things. If you guys want more details on this kind of information and what I'm talking about, always get in the comment section, ask me. I make videos based on all the stuff you guys ask because well, I have nothing better to do with my life than to be a YouTuber as far as all the other things I do. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's not as difficult as you might think. Focus on the cars. They're amazing cars. They're fun cars to drive. They are some of the best vehicles I have ever seen. That being said, use your head. Use common sense. Don't let other people influence, uh, especially FUD, you know, or idiocracy. <laughs> Don't let that kind of stuff influence how you feel about the car you bought. These are amazing cars. And by far, it is one of the best cars, if not the best car I've ever owned. And well, actually, I can truly say now that I said that out loud, I can truly say that it is the best car I've ever owned. That Tesla Model S 100D right there. Wonderful car. Love it. And frankly, don't worry about stuff you don't have to worry about buy cars that are intended for your purpose the things that you need that car for you need a truck don't buy a model 3. <laughs> you want to carry two by fours don't buy a model 3 although it actually can technically fit in there point being is i see people complaining about things but they bought the wrong car for their regular everyday use stop complaining you made a decision um, live with it if you didn't want a small car when you needed a big truck you shouldn't have bought the small car. And a lot of these things kind of go down the same path. All right, I've talked enough. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, as I keep saying so many times, YouTube is one of those funny places where it absolutely, it's horrific how YouTube sets up everything. So if I want this channel to grow, if I want to be able to pay, make polls on this video so I can ask you guys a lot of questions, I need to actually hit 1000 subscribers for that because until then, I, the poll option is not unlocked on my channel and sharing the videos if you think you have a friend that wants to buy a tesla you kind of want to understand what uh, you know you want them a little help <laughs> um well hopefully you're going to share the video my videos with them and then i'll be honest about what i think and again i've been driving my car for three years i've been driving my tesla for three years i absolutely love it but as i always say i don't just tell you guys good things there are bad things there's plenty of videos on that on this channel that all being said, if you are an owner currently or if you just bought your Tesla and you are driving on autopilot, keep in mind, autopilot is an assistant. It is not the driver. <laughs> it is strictly your assistant. So don't treat it as your primary driver. Treat it as an assistant. Be safe out there. Drive safe, everyone. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Hit the thumbs up for me, please. Thank you. Catch you later, I guess. Yeah, later. Bye.